one. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Mm -mm. Hey. Hope you're Stop. comfy. Hope you're cozy. Hope you're ready. It's a new year, damn it. Another fun-filled, exciting, let's get after it episode of This is the Future. Unfortunately. That's right. Hot shit. We made it. Another Hot year. Shit. Another episode. I think the mail's coming early. I don't know. Just trying to get it over with. <laughs> trying to surprise the trying to surprise the doggo. Throw him off the <laughs> throw him off the scent. Didn't work out. Didn't work out. Um, what's, so up, what's up, man? Man, you just get back from 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 your hunting fishing trip. Yeah, god damn it. That's um, right. Did you bag Did you bag a, a bass and a deer? A human, uh, a fucking human yeah. to go hunting humans. I uh, I always I love I love wearing this hat because it's such a like it's a comfy hat and I have like a. I have a huge fucking head, and it, uh, um, it, like, I don't know, it just fits perfectly. It's a nice hat, but I do forget that I do look kind of like a fucking Trump lover, but um, I am not that, but <laughs> that's what, I guess that's kind of my aesthetic of what I'm showing. That was a private joke, Alex. I was saying, I was calling you a Trump supporter in private. We don't need to put that on the internet. <laughs> You know what? As I'm looking at you, I'm gonna be honest with you. As I'm looking at you now, I can't see your bottom half, but I'm I'm really picturing you wearing like you know, cami pants with those giant rubber wading like hunting boots, but you know swamp boots because you spend a lot of time. And I also believe just by looking at you that you now have a fan boat parked in the driveway. You probably just got back from hunting some pythons down in the Everglades. <laughs> definitely, definitely with your nose ring with the tattoos. Hey man, I just bagged me 14 pythons, weighing in 1,200 pounds a piece, brother. There's a Cadillac inside one of them. Woo <laughs> that, that's you. That's what I see. That's it. I know. Like I, I, I look like a fucking hillbilly, and then there's a dog barking in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Your girlfriend's down there tuning up the banjo and mixing up the shine. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Oh, we well, really got to go hunting pythons now. This is good. I know. Like when you're talking about that, I was like, I don't know. That sounds fun. <laughs> All I can see is you standing there, and then you pan over to me, and I just have one arm here and one down by my ankle, and I'm wrapped up, and I'm like, help, help! I need help, help, help! <laughs> Found Tony's one. <laughs> Tony's famous line: "Help, help! I need help." Yeah, it really uh, is. But uh, he actually, you actually need it this time. <laughs> I think that's probably what would happen. Be like, so what are we gonna use for bait? You? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, fuck yeah! Oh, that's that's a good way to start a show. Python mm -hmm. hunting. I, 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 I'm down. Let's do it. Well, I was just I read a read a message from um from Danny, you know, one of our top fans here, and. Oh. Uh, She's always cool as hell. Always happy to hear from her. And um, we were, I just mentioned the beer that they're making. So anyway, we have a date to go down there and get drunk on that new 50% uh, beer that her, her man invented. And then we're all going to go take selfies with Mickey. So, um, cause they live in the, uh, the, the big O down there in uh, Florida, Orlando, Mickey. Mickey. Mickey, you know, Mickey, the mouse. Mickey oh, mouse. you're going to go to, no, we were, we, 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 it's a work trip. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's right. yeah. I'm and so if, if you drive west of their location by about three hours, I believe you're in Python Python country. So we got we can work that out. Or maybe we skip Mickey and we just all go to, you know, hang out with some pythons and drink beer. Let's mouse nap Mickey. <laughs> what? Is it a pot? Yeah. Oh, maybe. mouse nap. <laughs> I, I was not even take a, I'm not taking a nap with Mickey. Oh, you're going to steal the mouse. Nap. Grab Mickey. <laughs> that. that. That's some Florida shit. For any mm -hmm. rebellious artists, here's your idea that, you know, a Florida artist, Mickey wrapped in a python. Just yeah. run with it. Go ahead. Send it to us when you get the idea, when you get the final work done and uh, Alex will have it tattooed. Um, I will. Sure. <laughs> will. I really, I volunteer his canvas. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, that's a good tattoo. I love it. I'll just write, uh, just write, uh, get her done on, on you know on the bottom right there because we got it done 
that'd be great just mickey choked the fuck out like i yeah. you know like red veins eyes, eyes popping like, out and like <laughs> purple in the face oh, and... oh. <laughs> <laughs> different person but whatever <laughs> yeah um <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. the first five minutes we talked oh, about we're on it yeah we're on fucking fire today. Mickey mouse. <laughs> and feeding mickey mouse to uh, a giant snake <laughs> no we're well, just we're not we're, we're, taking we're not mickey talking hunt, about we take mickey mickey. Mouse's... yeah we take him hunting and he just you know he's gonna be the first one to god how's this snake not gonna want to go after a mouse they love mice That's right. it's the biggest right. mouse that snake's ever Fuck seen yeah challenge accepted um <laughs> What we're not talking about is Mickey Mouse is actual an actual person. So uh... <laughs> there's a few people that play that costume. So I'm pretty sure it's just, you know, that day would be the one with the lowest customer service scores. You know, but all right, Billy's going to be in the costume on Python Day. Right. That's all there is to it. Hopefully, um, the, hopefully Mickey Mouse doesn't actually get a uh, mouse snapped. So because um, they, they'd be like, well, they were talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have to dig real deep into the YouTube the, the the YouTube library to find this episode. <laughs> true, true. But hey, we're deep in there, and that's a good thing. We're deep. Tony. Oh yeah, we're well, yeah. We we have there's there's the books that we're next to have dust on them. We're we're way in there. We're not leaving. Yeah, we're deep as fuck, dude. That's right. So deep. Hashtags and shit, yo. Mm hmm. So how you been? Uh, oh, I'm just gonna ask you the same thing. Uh, I've been good. I win. Uh, you win. Uh, New Year's was good. Uh, I saw, uh, went to a show. Uh, I saw Big Business and Murder City Devils play. Fuck you, oh. really? Yep. God damn it. That's a, oh, shit. Big Business and Murder City Devils. Did did, he, did Cody stay on the kit the whole time? Yeah, right, yeah. Um, yeah, he, I mean, he did. He played both, and it was just them. It was just those two bands. And uh, How long did Big Business play for? Like an hour and a half? No, they played for me 45 minutes, an hour. Yeah, yeah regular set. Right and then Murder City Devils played about an hour and a half. Oh, so Big Business opened for Murder City, Murder City Devils? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Now, that's why they, That's why he only played 45 minutes then. Yeah. Well, I mean... That's a full Mur set. Murder City Devils been... They're, they're a bigger band. They've been around longer, um, you know, in the underground... Is he still the? Is he still their drummer? Yeah. Oh yeah, he's the drummer of both bands. He Holy did shit! Bands. And he's a drummer for High on Fire. Oh yeah, is he? I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if he's a fill in, but he was definitely on their tour. Oh. Huh. With Pike, I don't. Yeah. Anyway, how was the show? It was a good show. Um, Big Business is awesome. Always, they're just good. They're just a good band. Um, Fuck the yeah. singer Jared just has that. Keep yeah, one of my yeah. favorite Love voices it. of yes. all rock or metal or whatever you want to call it, you know? Yep. Um, And yeah, Cody's like the best drummer ever. He's so fucking good <laughs> and he's so fun to watch because in big business, you know, they turn him sideways, you know? And um, oh, yeah, he's face right. He's yeah. side, so um, side profile. Yeah. So, um, you could see everything better. You could see what he's doing. And, you know, like, it just, like, it's fucking good. And, uh, yeah, it was a good show. Um, we set up on the balcony. And, like, I felt like an old man because I was just sitting I'm gonna down. I say, you old fuck, what are you doing? Just yeah, I was, I was up there. You know? Hey, man, you got to relax sometimes. Take it easy. You know? After all that python fishing shit. <laughs> yeah. I got tired, man. That's hard work, Tony. God damn it. Walking through the muck and tall grass. God damn it. Trying to wrangle yourself a goddamn python. Just trying fucking... to make some fucking boots, man. But shit. Yeah, <laughs> slippery noodle. Oh, fucking god damn it. Slippery noodle. Uh, <laughs> Long day. You got to sit up top and watch the show. I get it. Yeah. Um. And uh, Mercy Devils isn't like a band I necessarily like listen to a lot anymore. Um, they were more of like a thing of my late teenage and twenties, mm -hmm. like in there. And but they put on a really good show. Um, they were fucking hammered. It was obvious, huh? At least the singer and the guitar player were fucking. This the the guitar player might have been on might have been doing some nose beers, if you know what I mean. 
Yeah, no, I get it. Fingers. Doing, doing a couple nose beers because there was like a disco ball, you know, way up top, and he kept on pointing at it. He'd be playing and he'd be looking. He just could be pointing at it, like playing and going. And, uh, and I was just like, <laughs> and then the song would be over, and he'd walk over to the microphone and just go disco ball, and then like walk back to his amp, and I was like. This guy's high as eagle tits, I bet. <laughs> and that's why people like us want those jobs. <laughs> yeah. Hi, are you guys have an opening? It just sounds awesome. Snowing on Mount Nostril <laughs> fucking still has a job. <laughs> Jesus. Um, and then like there was one like the singer didn't talk very much. Um, and then when he did, it was noticeable that he was fucking hammered, like stuck, like stuck stuttering all over the fucking place you know and just Damn. like slurring i'm like this guy's like fucking uh, being ozzy right now like oh shit <laughs> can't fucking talk but when he starts to sing it's fine <laughs> wow <laughs> i know what i'm i know these words i just don't yeah. know the fresh ones coming to my brain <laughs> yeah and uh but yeah it was fucking they were fucking a hammer you, you could tell <laughs> I mean, they were having a good time, so you know, fuck it. It was on New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. That's fucking awesome. I'm j that would have been a really fun thing to do on New Year's Eve. The only thing is, is I wish they would have played a little longer or let Big Business play a little longer because they didn't. They ended at like eleven forty. They didn't go until midnight. You know, the whole at oh, they probably wanted to go back and get fucked up on their own. Yeah, I know. And uh, I think that they were planning to come back out because they, like, you know, went away. And it, I think they were planning to. And everyone was like, you know, Murder City Devils, Murder City like, doing the whole thing. And They didn't know, come they, back? They, and they, they acted like they were going to come back. Like, they, oh. set their, they set their guitars down. They was kind of, like, feeding back a little bit, you know. And then, and then, like, about three minutes later, the lights just turned on and they started breaking it down. And I was like, I wonder if something happened. <laughs> like, you know, like the singer was like, I'm too fucked up and started throwing up everywhere or passed out or something. You know, I was just like, it looked like they were going to come back and do it, but something happened. That's what it seemed like to me. I was like, well, fuck it. That's like the played, first they show I've while. seen. That, yeah, I've seen that. You see that every once in a while. It, it's enough now. It happens enough in shows now to where you're like, are they going to do an encore? Or are yeah. they going to fuck with us? And they it's kind of a mixed bag. It was just fun sure. in a regard, but it's like, really? You're not going to play your fucking hit? <laughs> like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um, Gotta come yeah, back again. Uh, fuck. I don't think that they were fucking with everyone. I mean, they might have been, but I bet you, I bet you somebody, you know, was like, I'm not going back out kind of thing, you know? Yeah, that that's the funny thing about like that versus like comedy or some shit. You know, it's just like comedians never come back out. <laughs> like, I'm not going back out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no one's gonna argue with you. <laughs> I don't feel like doing this anymore. All right, quit. Fuck it. <laughs> well, because it's like, it's not like they're not from Portland, but they're from Seattle. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like a home town show in a way you know like sure. they're oh, three hours down the road right? three and a half hours away it's not like and so is big business they're both from that area so are they from port oh they're seattle yeah oh, okay they got some good music in portland i like i, I like the sounds that come out of the northwest mm -hmm. like real the rock sounds are awesome they, anyway i like their yeah. shit well i'm trying to think who is it was it helm is helms ali that's a band i told you that opened for the yeah. melvins right yeah. Yeah, a lot of respect for that band. That is, yeah, I've seen them. I've seen them before. Um, I would see. Yeah, I'm excited to be around that area and see those bands again, or see more yeah. of them, because they're smaller shows. Usually don't. Yeah, I I saw them in like a little, a little tiny place that doesn't exist anymore. And it was kind of like a, a good punk spot, a good punk rock metal metal venue, and it was like it was a basement of a bar, and it was just like this tiny low ceilings. You know, yeah. but it's but it's narrow, but it's long. You know, yep. and if it's like, you, if you're in the back, you could just see like mohawks almost touching the ceiling. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> nice. Oh yeah. I saw them 
at that place. And um, yeah, they're great. They're a good band too. Hmm. Good band. Um, but how about you, man? How how are you? How how was your New Year's? Um, it was good, man. I worked till eight, got off, went and hung out with my parents and Steph, and drank and had a good time. We were gonna like kick it on the. Sh- we were trying to find Steph and I were trying to find another bar just to go get fucked, like have one more drink and then watch. They do a ball drop here in town. Oh, okay. Um, we were gonna watch that, but we just kept walking towards my house and um, we didn't. All the bars were full. And it's funny, the older I get, the less interest I have in walking into a full bar. Yep, I hear you. No <laughs> fucking interest. What's, it's it's funny. It's just like, who wants to hang out in an empty bar? Me! Hi! I do. Yeah. But I don't no, want to talk I'm to the bartender. I don't want to talk to the bartender. I just don't want to be in a busy bar. Just give me my beer. I'll go over here and, you know, look at your menu and not order anything. But that's fine. <laughs> just no. So that didn't happen. So we ended up back at my house and um, made made some made some drinks. Got fucked up real fast. That was it's always fun when the elevator just goes straight to the top. No one else gets on, just <laughs> straight up. Ding. And uh we'll see the, the plan the plan is the, the bitch about living here, especially well, you have the parade, which I talk about every year because I, you know, haven't lived here my whole life, so I still like to go to the parade. So mm-hmm. the Mummers Day parades on New Year's Day. We got 60 to de- I think it was like 60 degrees. Beautiful fucking day. It was supposed to rain, so there's an Eagles game happening. And then there was the parade and the dream. Of course, you know me. You've hung out with me. I, I take I, I go for all of it. I was like, great. So we'll get up early. We'll go to the parade. We'll score Eagles tickets. We'll go to the Eagles game. And then I'll probably fall asleep and get hit by a car in traffic because I'll be exhausted. <laughs> so that was the plan. And thank for thank God for technology in this regard. But you can just sit there and look at the price, the uh, ticket prices, you know, and I just like too expensive, too expensive kept getting more and more expensive but for fun i just kept checking the app to see if the eagles tickets would ever get any cheaper right they didn't but i will i like this i don't know if that's something i've gotten into as i've gotten older i like to know how much money i saved sometimes <laughs> that, that that is an old man thing by it is way. yeah I'm, i've always <laughs> been an old rusty bastard i'm just finally getting old and fitting that role like physically right. i'm starting to look that way which is nice Goddamn but, 40 cents. I said 40 goddamn cents. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> no, it actually wasn't. The tickets, a fair fair price for, a, for an Eagles game, as they've been winning this year mostly. Uh, I paid 125 to see the them play the Packers, which was the best football game I've ever seen live. Um, so that's the bar. The, now the Eagles, needed. they need to win one more game. They have one game left. They lost to the Saints. So long story short, I watched the tickets go up to two. The cheap, cheapest ticket ended up being two hundred and seventy-five dollars, like five minutes before the game. Shittiest seat in the house, probably. Um, in any case, we didn't go. We just stayed down at the parade, did our thing. But they lost, which is okay because you could tell I'm not that big of a fucking fan. Surprise! I don't give a shit. It's not my job. Don't really care. But it's cool if they win because then everyone else around here is less of an asshole for a minute. Mm-hmm. So they lost, and I immediately I was like the only person in Hard Rock Cafe that's like, Woo-hoo! <laughs> all right, I saved two hundred seventy five fucking dollars. I go buy a hooker and a sled and some cocaine. I don't know all kinds of shit. I don't need. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's like what? I'm gonna go sledding with the, with a hooker on cocaine. <laughs> it's gonna be fantastic. With this hooker and all this cocaine, we're gonna go sledding. <laughs> So it's it in my nose. <laughs> right. So one of the so one of the biggest happiest moments of my day was not having bought those tickets and not having seen that game. So that was a win for me. And then um so we're at the so we get down to the parade at like nine in the morning and I'm tired. Like I don't know what it is with New Year's Eve, alcohol and plans, but sometimes the sex monster shows up and he's just like, Hey, we're gonna screw for the next six hours. Like Okay, but we still have to get on a train in two hours. Like, well, fuck it. We're doing it anyway. So I was fucking exhausted. Mm -hmm. And as you know how that is, start, just get the alcohol and the weed going. Just start right out of the gate. Climb out of bed, start doing drugs. That's the way to do it. Six hours. That's, uh, it's not very long. It's uh, pretty short. Yeah, that was a mix of sex and sleep. It was (laughs) in a six hour period. It wasn't, it wasn't great. (laughs) <laughs> um, but somehow I held it together and I wasn't a grumpy bastard. We get down to the parade, we're hanging out and there's a, um, downtown Philly, the main street that the parade goes down is called broad street, broad street. If you keep going, ends at the stadiums. 
So the parade runs down Broad Street, down to South Philly, where the Mummers, the Mummers Parade, all the cool people in the costumes and everything. Mm-hmm. They end in South Philly. They go down that street. Right. Uh, they have the big fucking, I always mess up the name of it, the State House is what I call it, because I don't remember what the fuck it's called. Nice big old building in the middle mm-hmm. of town. Anyway, mm-hmm. you we like to hang out on that street and watch the parades and the clowns and all the drunk people in the parade and all that fun shit. I like to look at people's eyes. Because everyone's eyes are all fucked up. You know, they're wearing this cool costume. Looks like they're from the future and the past at the same time, but covered in glitter. You know, that's cool. But yeah. their eyes, they're like younger like younger kids, like in their 20s. So they're probably fucked up for seven days straight. Sure. Just to look at them like, ooh. It's like, is this guy going to fall down? Like, that's what I like to see. So I like to watch the parade from behind. Mainly because yeah. I couldn't see anything the other way. But I couldn't just like, oh, he's tipping. He's falling. He's going up. So we decided to hang out on the side of the these nice big fucking buildings downtown. They have ledges on them. So usually you can't hang out on these buildings. But this day we stood on the ledge, which is like five feet up off, you know, off the ground. And then you can sit on the windowsill. So here we are. We're sitting on the ledge slash windowsill sill of the on the side of the Philadelphia Ritz Carlton Hotel. Mm. Like nicest fucking hotel should have been shoot off it's, with a broom. Wasn't. Yeah. So we're standing there, and this dude comes up. He's got a name tag on, uh-huh. and it says, um, a, a, what is it called? Something scholar, a Rhodes scholar. Which, yeah. you, if you look it up, I, I think it, I don't know if it, then I, I'm an idiot here. So if you're watching this and you're pulling out half your hair because I'm wrong, whatever. In any <laughs> case, I looked it up, and a Rhodes scholar basically means you know a shitload about one or two particular topics. Yeah. So my man was smart in some field. And, um, He kind of looked like a hobbit that quit, you know, just kind of quit life. But he seemed like a smart fella. So (laughs) he hops up on this thing. And there's cops. There's lots of cops. I I mean, all of the cops were out. None of them working, but they were in uniform. So standing, there's a cop standing in front of us. This noble, this smart fella, whatever he's into. (laughs) He uh, he says, excuse me, do you do you two mind if I smoke a joint? And immediately I was like, bing. Hi. <laughs> and Hi. I was like, I was like, fuck no, I don't mind. So of course I pull out my old, you know, home rolled shit. I'm like, no, I don't. And he's like, oh, okay. So he's just, we didn't smoke his shit or nothing because I was afraid if I smoked with him, I'd be smarter, and I didn't want to do that. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to get smarter, Tony. No, no. So don't in any that. case, we're smoking weed. There's a cop right there. So already I'm happy as shit. I'm like, this is a great New Year. You know what else can happen? So. We, you know, we keep watching the parade. We leave that guy. He just keeps getting smarter and smarter. And we walk away. And we, we've seen the parade many times. So it can get boring. So I'm like, hmm, let's switch it up. Since it's nice, and I now know where we are in the city from living here long enough, Hard Rock Cafe is only two blocks away. It's lunchtime. <laughs> so we go yeah. in there for lunch, right? Mm-hmm. We're sitting there. And they had a band playing. They had a dude with a guitar playing really bad, you know, versions of popular songs that I hate anyway. Right. They decide to seat us right in front of the speaker, right there. Oh, and nice. I, before I even sat Fun. down, the guy's playing his guitar, and I'm like, nope. Like three, I could hear it through the mic. You could hear my no through his mic. I was like, nope, not sitting here. No way. I just turned yeah. around and started walking. The other's like, Mm-mm, fuck no. So right. she put us in the far corner. Now we're being helped by the bartender. Nice. The bartender, just like the people in the parade, hasn't slept for seven days. So she's like, hey, what can I get you? I'm like, whoa, all right. I was like, all right, all right, let me have a mojito. And stupid idea. In any case, she's like, okay. And my lady gets one too, so now we both have mojitos. If anyone knows anything about a fucking mojito, at least all the ones I've had, there's no brown in a mojito. No brown liquor in a mojito. Not in Mm. the ones I've had. It's all clear. Rum. That kind of shit. I don't know what in the fuck was in this drink. No idea. I'll never know. But I know that there was nothing but liquor in that drink. I literally think she just said, she's like, we have too much of this liquor. We have too much of that liquor. We have too much of that liquor. Oh, yeah. Ice and mint. Smash, smash. Here you go. And I was like, I sucked on it. And I was like, this is poison. I'm going to drink all of this. (laughs) Great. And I told her, I didn't try to insult her, but I said, hey, can I trouble you for a Sprite? And she was like, sure. And so I was playing mixologist. I'm like, la, 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 la. Shh, shh, shh. here you go. Here you go. Tastes better. Let's drink these. Choked them down, ate our food, 
get on the street, burn a joint in front of the Liberty Bell, walk mm. all the way down to get ice cream. This is how it works with me. So now we're getting ice cream, but I'm fucked up. I slammed this drink, no idea what's in it, smoked a joint. Now I'm standing in this ice cream joint, we're ordering a banana split, and I am literally about to fall the fuck over. Like, in my head, I'm like, I'm shutting down. All the little people in my body are just su shutting down the system. Like, beep! It was that strong of a drink, huh? I have no fucking idea if it was the drink, if it was the weed, or just me, but it was over. I was standing there, and I was like, oh, shit, it's over, it's so over. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not happy about it. I'm sad. I'm like, I'm going to die. I'm going to fall over in the sidewalk. This, banana split. <laughs> this is a $20 banana split. I'll never get to try it. And so I walk outside and I, I don't know what, what was going on. But I walk outside and I'm about to pass out and someone just goes, Hey, yo, fuck you. And I was like, <laughs> I'm up, I'm up, I'm good. <laughs> it wasn't even at me. They weren't, I don't know who was cussing, but it was great. Right. I was like, all right, let's go. I'm back. I'm alive. Thanks, Billy. <laughs> always, always when I need you. <laughs> so yeah, that to sum it all up. We didn't make it back to the parade. We were so fucked up. We ended up on a on another train, headed back home. Took an early nap, but right. best way to spend New Year's had a hoot. That's just that's exactly how I would have done it, and that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, so awesome. okay. I had a good time. I thought it was they fun probably, to smoke a joint in front of Liberty Bell. They probably. She probably used the uh, like dark rum or golden rum, you know. Oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah, it was right. It was it just the last thing she did was put some brown shit in the top, and it just went down like you know, like when you can't flush the toilet and the poop just dissolves, and yeah, it yeah. looked like it was slowly turned. I wasn't into it. Also, some places, you know, put like iced tea or Coca Cola in a in a mojito, which. Does which is means it's not a mojito, but yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's it's like the you know <laughs> it said traditional mojito. It didn't say right. dirty mojito or cracked out mojito or this bitch doesn't care. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it could have been one of those things. Like yeah, that's what we got. Yeah. But the cool thing is, after oh, I'm drinking yeah. this thing, I was like, hang on a second. I'm a value guy. How much is this? I was like, 1250? For six alcoholic drinks, because that's essentially what this tastes like. Six mm -hmm. alcoholic drinks at once. So yeah, she did get me fucked up for twelve dollars and fifty cents. So, <laughs> I'll take well, it. Hey, that's good. It's good to be a cheap date, Tony. That's good. I like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, passing out at a fucking at an ice cream shop, that's always been my goal. That's how you know your <laughs> limits. <laughs> that's all right. I'm uh, I don't need the ice cream. I'm just having a diabetic. Uh, <laughs> It's just, right? just to see me just 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 tip the fuck over like he's going he's gone oh well face first into the in, into the vanilla bean just like <laughs> you ever seen someone pass out like I actually just happen to see someone pass out it's sad but kind of funny <laughs> oh it's funny when people fall no matter what from what it's great <laughs> <laughs> i've seen people in the military this is where people pass out we talked about this with the english soldiers and whatnot but the nutcracker mm. people but oh, yeah. it's funny when it happens. I saw it in junior ROTC in high school. They just, <laughs> it just fall over. It's like cow tipping. It's like no one touched them. Like, this is neat. <laughs> so yeah, I almost did that. I thought it was pretty funny because I made yeah. it. Fucking, that's great. Yeah. Well, I like to have fun when I'm out. Oh yeah. Fucking hey. I had a whole jar of moonshine in the, in the bag, but we never got into it. Didn't need it. You had moonshine? Yeah, I still have it. Never opened it. What are you doing with moonshine? Well, you know what we do with moonshine. <laughs> yeah, but I, I just don't, I don't, uh, I don't uh, see you being a moonshine guy. That's Dude, cool. there's pictures. Yeah, what are you talking about? There's pictures on Facebook of us at a mummer's pre with my family. I'm holding the jar like this, <laughs> pouring shots illegally on Broad Street. <laughs> oh. I don't have Facebook, so I don't know. But I don't know what I didn't post them. I, somebody posted them somewhere, but they, you know, people send them to you every year. You know, it's like, look at what you did five years ago. So, yeah, <laughs> I sure did. I got my aunt oh. and uncle and everyone else fucked up on shine. I look like the guy that would be talking about being on moonshine. <laughs> I think you're the, I was kind of waiting for you just to talk about the kind of potatoes you like to use when you mash up your own. Because yeah, you used to seem like that guy, like, I'll talk about shine all day. Like, all right. <laughs> Back in my day in Tennessee when we was inventing NASCAR, <laughs> let yeah. me tell you, boy. <laughs> so, 
Well, where do, I'm I'm interested in you and moonshine right now. I don't know why. So where do you get your moonshine from? You got a secret like hillbilly source in the woods, or you got? And they sell it in a fucking liquor store, and it's the regular shit. It ain't like you know Jim Bob Shine from his ranch or anything, but they sell it as moonshine. But um, Smoky Mountain is one of them. We went down to uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, a few years ago. I'm surprised. I'd be surprised Portland didn't have one of these, but they have. Um, you know, at all the cool places to go on vacation, they have all these bars and all this shit on the strip. So they had a place where you go in and you you try different shots of shine. Like mm -hmm. you walk you walk down and you see all these people standing around a table and there's a guy with like, okay, this next shot is a blah, blah, blah. And this is a blah, blah, you know, and you get like 18 shots. So we bought it there, um, brought it back up with us. But now you can get it on the whole East Coast. It's probably everywhere, but it's potent shit. It works. It's I got I get the apple pie. Someone bought me the like the clear shit, white lightning. I haven't touched that yet. Ooh, yeah, baby. I'm trying to find something to mix it with. Um, your mouth? Just you know, drink it. Fuck no, it. man, it just takes the whole inner lining of your mouth out. Your cheeks get skinny and shit. Just, ugh. Yeah, it'll be fine. No, no. <laughs> no. I had one drink in a joint and almost passed out in a fucking Dairy Queen. I'm not gonna do that shit. <laughs> I'm drinking I... a fucking moonshine. I was uh, on tour with Larry, Larry and his flask a long time ago, like, I don't know, 15 years ago or some shit. And we were in the, like, in Modesto, I think, but, like, mm -hmm. kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And we met these hillbillies, and they they both grow weed and make moonshine. Fuck. And then they made a THC-infused moon, moonshine. And they gave us some, but no one else wanted to drink it. Well, I was like, well, fuck it. I'll do it. So <laughs> it was just like, it was like, a, it looked like an airplane bottle of liquor, you know, like yeah. this much. And I took a sip. So I probably drank like this much. I, I fucking was blind. I couldn't, I don't even know. Like, I, I was so fucked up just, for, and I wasn't like super fucked up before. I mean, I had like a drink or two, you know, we were at, we were at the venue, but I got, just from that little sip, I got fucking stoned and drunk. It was fucking potent shit, man. Poison. And if you could, if you had to say, when you say stoned, did it feel like you had eaten brownies or smoked a joint? It felt like everything. Yeah. Yeah, I it, bet because you mixed it with alcohol, but and you ingested yeah. it. So, but I, I was well, I was instantly like tingly and like high in my brain, you know, like up uh, here, like, and then kind of drunk. I was like. Oh man, I'm fucked up. <laughs> what is this shit, man? Still what trying to put this? the lid back on the bottle. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, bottle like, man, I was like, did I just do DMT and fuck? Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> like, I drank it, gave it to someone, and then like, in within like two or three minutes, I was like, fuck, man, I'm, are they are they trying to kill us? <laughs> Take us back <laughs> to the shack? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> they they pay you to screw that bear. <laughs> They pay us for that bear. <laughs> Fucked up like fear and loathing over here. <laughs> you, know. you know, we keep talking about I've taught there's like I have like two or three friends that might actually would do that with me, like try to do a fear and loathing Vegas trip, which the older I get would probably just involve a half a shot of something like that. And that would be it. <laughs> and go in the bed. Like <laughs> got a bag full of cold start engine cleaner and all kinds of other poisonous shit, but we never got into that. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. I'll 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 go to the loony bin with you, Tony. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to loony bin multiple times. <laughs> well, we've been multiple times to the loony bin. I'll do I that. know, but I still, I, there's still some things I want to do. And going, I, I'm, I am going to do this one day because I've said it too many times not to. But definitely have to drop ass and go to Disney. Just have mm. to do it. Just not stupid. I don't want to like get kicked out or like man goes nuts at Disney World. I don't want to make the headlines, but right, just have a cash. I mean, people are micro -dos dosing now because it's cool. So. Right. And if you just keep micro dosing, the next thing you know, <laughs> you're yeah. in the Mickey costume. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, you're you're in the Mickey costume getting fed to a python, you know. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh my god, someone make that art right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a good that's be, that would be on the Florida license plate, you know, like that's it. Oh yeah, it totally <laughs> would. I don't know why it's not. <laughs> 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 how does it come up right fuck yeah i watched um maybe i told you this already but i just love this line you've seen you watch clerks right i've still yeah i've seen clerks 
You haven't seen the third one, though, I take it. No. no, no, no All no, right. No. So in any case, the girl in the third one, she sums up Florida so so good and so funny to me. Um, dude asks her, he's like, hey, how's Florida? She's like, it sucks and I'm surrounded by assholes, but at least it's not New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I love that line because I fucking Jersey sucks and I've been to Florida. I totally get it. And I'm like, that is so, oh, <laughs> just put that on a Hallmark card. God damn it. Who, write more, do cards, whoever you are, write cards. That's so fucking good. I love truth. Oh, anyway, um, speaking of truth, you had a really good idea um, for our unfortunate topic of the week. And I wanted to yes. get into that. Yeah, um, it was, the unfortunate topic is, and it's kind of funny because we're kind of in this too, Tony and I are. But like YouTube families, and what I mean by that is, if you there's certain and there's multiple of them, a lot of them like, um, usually white, probably well off, goody two shoes, like never gonna get in trouble, and if I do get in trouble, daddy's money's gonna ba bail me out, kind of family. Yeah, like these families that are, like put their life on YouTube, where like. And the one that I I could think of in particular is they're called the Ninja Family. Yeah, it's it's like two, like good look, like stereotype, like what someone would think good looking is, like a yeah. mom, a dad, and then four kids. And and I think it's like the oldest might be twelve or thirteen or something like that. And it's I just the reason why I think it's unfortunate is because I think that's fucked up. To how I like, bring kids up on the internet and like they're they're going around to like conventions or, or public places, events and stuff, and like filming. Oh yeah, doing like and I, there's one video that I saw of theirs, and it's like their dad taking I think one of the girls around, like little blonde white girl, you know, taking her around to wherever they're at. Like it, it seems like it seems like they're at a comic con. That's what it seems like to me. Okay. And the person behind the camera and the dad and the girl are walking around and he goes up to strangers. He's going up to strangers, okay? And he's going, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. And this is blah, blah, blah from the ninja family. Uh, we're doing this experiment uh, or whatever. How old, you know, you'll get, you'll win $100 if you could guess how old she is. You know, and everyone's like, whatever no one gets it right you know everyone's like i don't know i just found it creepy <laughs> to be honest with you and like going up to a bunch of like guys that are like you know in their 40s going like <laughs> i think i think she's 16 i think she's 15 and all that like and i'm just like i was like this is it's just weird to me i think i think it's weird to bring up kids on the internet and have them on youtube and their whole life you know, it's right. on you. Just fucked up to me. I don't know. I, you know, I 100% agree with you here. Um, yeah, I do. I, I do know that we're kind of like this, like, we're on YouTube. <laughs> but it's, I'm not saying YouTube is bad or like having a presence online is bad. No, I'm you're just, not saying that. I'm just saying like. You're saying it's fucked up to bring your kids who can't actually make these decisions for themselves into your fucking into what you've decided to do for a living yeah it's basically like hey guess what kids dad's a carny i'm a carny you're all carnies now too whether you yeah. like it or not and everywhere you go people are going to notice you because that's our job but to get yeah, likes and, and so you have you, no privacy so you're probably yeah. not going to like us in your when you're in your 20s and it gives you this like false sense of like geez i keep on stepping on the cord sorry yeah <laughs> I, it gives you. I feel like it would give the kids like a false sense of, well, you know, people know about us. We're like famous or whatever. But in reality, you just have a stupid show on YouTube. You know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah, it's and like, we know about that part. <laughs> yeah, we know very. Uh, you know. We don't know but, success, but we know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's just it the the video of them like going around, like having grown adults you watch the video it's mainly guys trying to guess how old she is that's that's and it's like it just it was weirding me out and there was nothing sexual about it they didn't mean it in a weird way 
Right. But when you're on the outside, it's it's weird to me. You know, it's like it's like when you see like a minivan, it has the little sticker on the back that has daddy and mommy and the kid and then the other kid and then like the little dog, you know, in front and there's a mailbox. And I'm like, you're just sending a blue blueprint for the ser- serial killers and pedophiles. Like, yeah, what follow do you me. Right. Like, yeah, like, don't don't put pictures on the Internet on your Facebook with your naked kid in the bathtub. It's weird. And I know they don't mean it to be weird, but it's fucking weird. (laughs) And that's how I took that video. It was like, why are you asking grown adults how old this 12-year-old is? It's fucking... Right. And, well, that's typical for, especially, like, America always gets the latest shit, the greatest shit, and we exploit the fuck out of it. That's our job as Americans. But Mm -hmm. the thing is, is, like, it just doesn't make any... It's ridiculous. We invent things, and then we try them out to find out what's wrong with them. So we are the test. We are. They're out there trying shit out. These are just throwing ideas against the wall to see what sticks so they can get likes every week. They sit down every Sunday. They have a family meeting. They figure out how they're going to get likes this week. That is a job. That's a fucking family job. And I'm sorry. I love my family, probably because I don't work with them. Yeah. Okay. seriously, I don't give a shit about your financial goals. I don't give a fuck how fucking black and tall and dark your new Yukon is because mommy and daddy got extra likes this week. I don't give a shit. We do this because we talk shit and people don't go to comedy clubs as much as we want to. We don't like waiting for that shit. So this is what Alex and I decided to do. And, you know, we get people to watch sometimes. So that's fine. But, <laughs> but to me, it's like I, I get where you're coming from. That is unfortunate. And that's probably the most unfortunate thing about it is that is doing doing something with your family and putting your kids into it before they're even like, they're probably like, there's four of them. So at least two of them are like, this is fucking stupid. Like, I know we should probably leave the family. Yeah, let's leave the family. Let's steal the Yukon and get the fuck out of here. And if they film that, then they can start their own YouTube channel. The Runaway Cobras. Yeah, right, there you go. Just fucking on their own now. You know, hey, I'm an idea guy. What do you want? But it to me, this is what drives me nuts. And I'll keep it brief. I promise. Um. I just give I, I it drives me nuts when I just see any of it's usually white people. I like it better when it's not white people because white people are so fucking cheesy. Hi, we're white, I know. But just like the one I don't know what family it is, but I always see the same they do the same shit every week. They hang out in their big fucking house with tall ass ceilings, and the husband and wife always like to fuck with each other. And they like usually it ends with someone popping off fucking sparklers in the house because they they won because they spilled goop on mom or whatever. Right. It was. Same thing every week. It's just, and, but the thing is, is like, there's no way that you enjoy doing this shit every week. There's no way you've already done it and you keep doing it for the likes. It's crazy. You're a dirty little whore and you're, you're just hooked on clicks. It's really strange. I get it. Your wife's ass is getting a little fatter. You got to get bigger yoga pants. That's fine. But you don't have to have a fucking YouTube channel to support it. I mean, there are some jobs out there. There really are, you know? I just, I don't, I, it's boring as fuck to me. But at the same time, I get upset because I'm like, listen, Alex and I come up with shit off the cuff. We're not having family meetings. We're not sitting down with crayons and coming up with new shit for next week. We're fucking winging it. And I think we do really well at winging it. I'm not seeing any winging it there. I'm seeing orchestrated, Spielberg directed bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, this is, uh. and then when I see people respond to it, like, oh my god, that was so funny. <laughs> Wait a minute. You think this was real? You don't think this was fucking staged? You yeah, don't think they're desperate so they don't have to go back and work at a fucking gas station for a living? That's all this is. This is horse shit. And you're biting into it? You're like, oh, that's that actually happened. <laughs> Silly kids. Oh no, you moron. So that's <laughs> where I get that's where I start to sweat and I get a little upset. So yeah, thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> I like how like you know, you're talking about white people in the internet being cheesy and doing cheesy things. We got a wheel. <laughs> no, we have a point. <laughs> we, yeah, I'm not saying we're wheel. better. It's the wheel. Talk about we're cheesy. not better, but we're we're rolling the dice and we suck, so it's fun. You know, we're we're doing it. Here's the difference. We if we're talking about motivation. We're not doing it because we have even 500 followers. We're not, we don't even have triple digits and it doesn't matter if we like doing it, we keep trucking. But those people are doing it because they're getting paid. Yeah. They're working. 
and they got the kids involved because they ran out of shit a long time ago with the two of them. Well, and, and, see, and some of these people, like some of these big like channels, like have writers and producers and like it, like a whole team and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Well, they're not very good. You know? Yeah. So I don't know. I just I think it's sickening because it's like a weird psychological thing to me. Like I see that like these kids are br being brought up on a YouTube channel. And it's like it's like are are they gonna how are they gonna turn how are they gonna be a fu like functioning adults or not like, is this like what the fuck <laughs> like I don't know it's just to me it seems like you're gonna fuck your kids up but this, this ties into a simple fact and many many um, countries their governments are trying to ban TikTok and America is a real big fucking problem with TikTok because. The number one thing that most kids are being, they're being asked, what do they want to do with their life? They're saying they want to be an influencer. Mm -hmm. And China's laughing their fucking ass off because their TikTok teaches their kids how to develop rockets and shit. Ours teaches us how to sniff our own assholes and get likes for it. So it's really good. It's smart if you're in the other country doing this shit. But if you're us, you're just a fucking moron. And that's what I'm seeing is just a lot of moronic shit. You know, I, I know I'm an idiot and that's okay. I'm, I'm working on it. But you're, you're teaching kids to like, hey, go out there and just just make content. It doesn't even need to mean anything. Well, then it diminishes the value of the content. It's like I'm tired of looking at this shit. We're all staring into the abyss eight hours a day. I would know. I sell the crack device. I know all about it. But it's not good. Most of this shit on there is trash. We've seen it already. We're rewatching the same stupid yeah. shit. People, it's so it, honestly, I think it will get worn out and and stupid. The problem is. If you're going to do a YouTube channel, how about a YouTube channel of you showing your child how to fix a fucking car or do something else? Because if you're going to have them go out there and ask them how you're fucking what age you are, be like, hey, watch me how I show my kid how to change the fucking oil. Right. Yeah. Whoa, wait a minute. Tony had an idea. Oh, shit. <laughs> but in any case, really, seriously, do something clever. That's not clever. That's fucking stupid. What are you doing? How old do you think my daughter is? Well, I'm hoping she's 14. <laughs> So, I'm following y'all. Ooh, creepy. Oh, we're following you. What did you do. Yeah, dumb, <laughs> dumb idea, Dad. Dumb idea. I never yeah. agreed with putting my kids on the internet. I honestly don't like. I only have one, by the way, but I don't agree with putting them on the internet. In any case, it's privacy. Fuck off. You guys don't even need to know what I'm up to. If I don't put it on the internet, there's a good reason for it. Hey, Tony, why didn't you post any pictures of New Year's? Well, if I took any, I don't remember. And uh, I'm not posting them because I don't fucking need to. I'm good. They're for me. And that's what we need to remember about the internet. It's That's just, people are just trying to make money. That's all it fucking is now. Look at me, look at me. Look what I can do. Look what I can do. That's that's our country. That's our world. You go to the gym, everyone's filming. Look what I did, bro, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next video, next video. It's ridiculous. It's redundant. And I'm asking you, when the videos are finally boring, dried up, and stupid, and we're not watching them anymore, are you going to be happy working at Walmart? That's all I want to know. Are you going to be happy at Walmart? Because we're like, aren't you that dumb fucking kid? Yeah, you're that dumb kid. Yeah, nice vest. Have a good day. I stole some of the shit in the bag, by the way. See ya. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want that life. So, yeah, make a video with some shit we can learn. But Alex, I like your point. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm a nut, whatever. All right, now that I'm sweaty, can we talk about music? Yeah, I'm sweating from the inside because, uh, yeah. Of your I sweat. can't. It's who it, you know. It, it's you know. You keep hanging out with me, like this little fucker, little firecracker. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. I don't know. Um, speaking of firecrackers, uh, <laughs> talk about music. Yeah, so music. <laughs> anyway, now that I got, I have to go sit in the green room and calm down. Um, no, but with with music, we decided this week we landed on the smile. That's the name of the band. And damn it, if I didn't forget the name of the the title of the album, do you remember off the top of your head? It's Da -da 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 -da, a light for attracting attention is the name yeah. of the album by the band the smile first full-length album and it is tom york and johnny greenwood of radiohead with a um i looked him up earlier so forgive me but a younger drummer we're the same age i remember that so it's just the three of them it's a three piece but the reason it's not radiohead is because it's just johnny it's just two members of radiohead and then um a fresh jazz drummer and yeah is how many people are in Radiohead normally like? Oh, Radiohead. 
Now I feel like a fucking moron. Yeah. Damn it, Alex. <laughs> uh, littering and uh, what? four or five. I think okay. it's four or five. I just wanted to know how many people were l- l- left out of the smile. You know what I mean? That's all. Well, that's my problem is I'm counting the people on stage, but I don't remember if all those people are like listed as musicians on the, the band. Okay, yeah, no worries. Um, I'm calling it four. Okay. Um, because I just thought it was funny because at first last week you said there was only one person not in Radiohead or in in Radiohead that's not in the smile. Yeah, I so think I, I, put, I fucked that up. Yeah. Okay. Because the whole time I've just been thinking, like, do they not like that guy? Like, they're like, all right, let's start a side project. You, you, you. That's it. And then, like, <laughs> well, that's what I thought. Smile because he's finally not. In the <laughs> he's <band>. not in it. <laughs> <laughs> We're smiling because he ain't in it. Yeah. I'm um, actually looking up Radiohead members so I can save some grace here. But um, let's see. Wait, five okay yeah yeah five members so yeah i was off and i'm okay with that um but yeah if you've ever looked at any youtube videos of tom york and johnny greenwood they like to play a lot of like they just like to dick around together so mm-hmm. i think those two obviously come up with a lot of ideas and they wanted their own band you know fuck tom york has like four side projects or like you know, four bands i don't know oh but, really? uh, anyway um what'd you think of the record um it's interesting. It's just uh, I like the music a lot. I've never cared for Tom York's voice. Um, right, sounds like a little baby trapped in a bathtub that's in the ocean somewhere. <laughs> what kind like of that. fucking dreams are you having? <laughs> well, I had a fucked up dream the other night, but um, <laughs> um. I think it's good. I think it's um I was uh listening to it this morning because I always try to listen to as much as the record that we're going to talk about the day of us recording the episode. Right. And uh I was listening to it drinking coffee and I was just like hanging out the dog, just petting the dog and you know, we her me and her uh do this thing where I call it dog TV where we just look out the window <laughs> i sit on the couch <laughs> she sits on the back of the couch and we just look out the window and she barks at things and watches things and i call both, it dog TV. you and, both uh, wag your tail yeah exactly and uh and i was looking i was listening to one of to like the last two or three tracks on the record and i'm drinking coffee petting emma and i was like man it's raining out it's all gray and rainy in portland this music is kind of dr- dreary could be almost can like considered sad music in a way and i was just like i was like man started seeing like thinking of some like sad shit and i'm like wait stop what the <laughs> snap out of it <laughs> and uh some things i want to talk about <laughs> but being said i i uh i did find um a few choice choice tracks from the record that i that i do like i liked um the smoke, uh, speech bubbles, thin thing, and um, waving a white flag. And I, I like waving a white flag because I made myself laugh. I was talking to Callie about this, and I was like, "This song is called Waving a White Frog," and I'm, and she's like, "What?" I'm like, <laughs> "It's called Waving a White Flag." <laughs> I don't know. I just looked at, it and I was just like. Flag is frog. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I, it made me laugh. It made that. <laughs> now someone's gonna make that song, but whatever. <laughs> Got a white frog. <laughs> what a flagpole. <laughs> yeah. You you know how you you like sometimes just glance at like a sentence or a word or whatever quickly and you go frog, flag. What that. <laughs> it makes sense because when a frog gives up he does turn white so it makes it ties in believe it or not you, you did a good thing there <laughs> um but how i actually feel is i i like the music and i like they're very good at making music that that they make <laughs> and they they're good at producing and making 
everything sound like perfect. You know what I mean? They like yep. their the musicianship is very good. It's just hard for me to get behind, and it always has been hard for me to get behind Tom York's voice. And it might be that I actually am not a big fan of his voice. And I also might be the fact that I saw that video that Radiohead did or Tom York did of him just dancing. And it, it weirded me out. So ever since then, I'm like, I can't, I can't look at pictures or videos of him. <laughs> um, but I did overall like it. It is a very, um, you know, mood oriented album mm -hmm. you know yeah <laughs> and but they're like i think speech bubbles was probably my favorite song on the album uh i thought i think like the bass line is really cool and yeah it's just a cool sounding song i'm gonna have to yeah i have to look after i've listened to the whole album several times like you did but i did not yeah that's right in between the smoke and thin thing yeah um, the ones that it's funny. What's cool about it is, is a lot of a lot of the ones that I liked are the ones that everyone liked on Spotify. The ones that you like necessarily weren't, which is really kind of cool, actually, to me. Mm -hmm. um, but the ones that jumped out at me were Thin Thing, uh, a, a hair dryer. That one fucks me up. Like The name doesn't. I'm like, why the fuck is it named a hair dryer? But it just it's a cool song, but it, the title bothers me. Um, we don't know what tomorrow brings. That's like their jam in my opinion and then um open the floodgates is what really grabbed my attention about the whole thing and i just want to quote the beginning lyrics real quick because they're some of my favorite lyrics yeah. um don't and and you're like his his voice on this one i i like it i like the way he sings this um don't bore us get to the chorus to me like i like that just because i feel like it's society i feel like i feel like he's saying that's the whole point. Everyone wants it right now. Like, like prime now. Everyone wants it right now. And I like that. I feel like he's just, you know, looking at society as a whole and calling it out. Uh, open right. the floodgates. We want the good bits without all, without your bullshit and no heartaches. Boy, if that ain't a fucking anthem for how people are feeling right now, honestly, I don't know what is. So that right. I like. That song really is what put the hook in me. Um, but then... I actually heard a live version of, I think, the, the Thin Thing and The Smoke. Okay, so, yeah, Thin Thing again and the, the Smoke. The live version of The Smoke is my favorite. It's a live recording at the Montreux Jazz Festival. Oh. Um, Montreux, whatever the fuck. Um, but in any case, that live, the live sounds even better, in my opinion. Um but I'll have to say, as far as the album goes itself, to give it an honest review, I feel that it's a slow burn in the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. I've, as I, you've noticed, I now read the lyrics, something I'm into. And um, the first couple I'm uh, reading the lyrics, I'm like, huh? I'm like, what? I don't get it. You know, just yeah. being honest, it's me. I'm not the most intelligent cat out there. I was kicked out of Harvard. They didn't let me stay. So kept going as it gets better. I, the music picks up. Things get faster. And it gets closer to Radiohead. And I think right. that someone like me, they're always just looking for that hard hitting Radiohead song or, the, you know, what they're capable of doing. And um, we don't know what tomorrow brings is kind of like the culmination, in my opinion, of that. Like, that's as heavy as that. In my, I think that's the heaviest the album gets. It goes right. off. And, you know, just it, to me, it's like the album does this. It goes up and then it nice, does a nice gentle landing on the end. But it takes a while going up. Right. You know, it's it's slow going more. in the beginning. Right. Which yeah. is fine. It's that's that's awesome. They've been making albums for 30, 40 years. They know what the fuck they're doing. Um, so I like it. I I really do like it. As far as like, is it my favorite album of all time or my favorite thing Tom York has done? No. But it's cool to see those two working together, pick up another drummer and kick out a crank a good fucking album over a pandemic. Mm -hmm. But that was pretty cool. You have right. to remember we have to remember that all the music that's coming out now is when people recording sad shit in their basement for two years. <laughs> yeah so it's true. like i'm like come on give it a little harder come on come on i'm still waiting for music to be like ah yeah we're not there yet we're still kind of like i'm kind of happy but i'm sad it's like all right all right all right come on back to happy let's go <laughs> i'm kind of happy but I'm sad. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we're getting there um so yeah if i had to give it a number one through ten i would go ahead and give it an eight okay um for me personally it's a i'm a moody bastard and that does fit one of my moods but i have many so as a, it's an overall eight for me. 
Right. I uh, yeah, I'd give a I give it a seven point five. Is what I'd do because I like it, but it's like kind of middle of the road. Like it's like it's good. It just didn't didn't like completely grab a hold of me. You know what I mean? It wasn't like that. Like I wasn't right. But I wouldn't say it's bad in any way. I feel like it's seven point five out of ten is that's a decent ish score you know what i mean you know it's more than half (laughs) well i mean the thing is with that is like one of my i think one of both of ours was um sloth rust that band they had they play mellow and they play you know they have a good range and i like that range in an album highs and lows like this that's the kind of baseline that i like like a heartbeat up and down up and down Then you start out slow for a couple of songs. I start to lose faith. I start to get tired. That's true. That's so, but then at the end, like the second half of the album, like, oh, 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 here we go. Here we go. And we, you know, we're going off. I love a song that's a song in an album that starts out slow and ends just going the fuck off the top of Everest. Like, that's how I like my albums. Slow right. and then heavy in the end. That's how I've always liked them in songs. So I felt like... um Peaks and Valleys would be more like a band like Slothrus. They do more of that. And this was just, like I said, a gentle climb up a steep mountain. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, cool. yeah, I think it's good. It's definitely worth uh, worth listening to for sure. And if you're, uh, you know, I think if you're a fan of TV face, you'll uh, you'll like, uh, <laughs> you'll probably like Radiohead. The, probably like the smile. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, sometimes you hear you only hear one song that you like on an album. Yeah. It's really hard to find a whole album that you like. So to find for me to find five cuts on an album that I like, hey, not bad. I mean, really. Nice work, fuck. <laughs> Shit, man. I've written thousands of jokes. I think people like two of them. So let's <laughs> fucking take it. You know? Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> about a thousand. That's not that's not bad, Tony. At least you got two. <laughs> every one out of every five hundred is a real winner, let me tell you. At least worth repeating. <laughs> oh shit! You know if uh, if they're if the smile is doing any anything live coming up? Anywhere? I have not. They I thought they did a real fast tour through America, like so fast I missed it for sure. Okay. They I thought they've already done. They did something. They played um, Glastonbury in twenty twenty one. Oh really? Yep. Oh. Well, of course. Any, anything fucking Tom York, they're probably going to put on main stage eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. But mm-hmm. um. This is this would be okay. This is another way. This is another way that I like to review bands. This would be a, and I've said this before. This would be a reason I would go to a festival. It would be a bonus on a festival lineup. It okay. would be. It would. It'd be like cool. That's a reason I'm going. Yep, I want to see that. So if that helps anybody, I would definitely see this live because it. They're really good fucking musicians, man. Like, <laughs> and they always sound crisp and clean. Like, it's just. That's what I was like. Really like concentrating on is their musicianship they're very good at placing um beats and when this should happen and when that should happen that kind of thing it like it yeah we'll put this in a song then we'll take that away and then put you know like they're they're good at that you know fuck yeah right i mean the con like the only thing is like down to the artistry you either yeah. you know you're either into what tom's saying and how he how he delivers it or you're not yeah, that's, that's yeah. yeah man um so you've heard some of our suggestions on the album there are definitely some cuts on there if you stream use streaming services i would just recommend probably you know listening to it yourself or just picking through it but there's some good songs in there if you want to check it out um time for the wheel wheel time that's right let's do our cheesy white person youtube thing we're not <laughs> shooting glitter at each other okay we're not going there <laughs> I got we're glitter. Gonna, we're going to now. Now we're going to have a glitter episode, but only to make fun of everyone who makes money doing that. I got the glitter. <laughs> Dude, you had glitter for a long fucking time. There's probably still some in your pockets. Yeah, probably. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, you'll never know because he doesn't do it anymore. But <laughs> my man used to have glitter in his act. <laughs> glitter, confetti, candy. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, man. <laughs> You should still put together all your best clips because they just have it. It's, it'd be fun. It's some funny <laughs> shit. Um, all right. So anyway, 
uh, for the wheel this week on the num in the number one spot. We've had some shit on here for months, by the way. Yeah, months. I know. There's been some things like oh, wow. quite a <laughs> some of this. I think three from hell might make it to Halloween. I don't know. Um, and yeah, we tried we, to get it last Halloween. So like, anyway. we, I mean, let's just say we got a few co like cocos on here, you know, that are just. <laughs> Dude, I all right. Well, you've brought it up, so now I have to say we went to Disney on Ice, and um, they yeah. did this right. Yeah, with the Disney on Ice, uh, the day after Christmas. In any case, um, I was watching the second thing that they did. Uh, there's a newer movie. Anyway, it reminded me of Coco, and so when it came out, I was, I was kind of like, I really wish this was Coco, and I'm like, <laughs> all these were like looking at me. And I was like, I told my mom, I was like, it's not about a dog. I said it loud. It's not about a dog. I thought it was about a dog. It's not about a dog. <laughs> <laughs> So, what are you blaming? If, 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 if you guys did anything, I, I like that movie. It's really one of the coolest fucking Disney movies I've ever seen. Another reason, if they have any area in that park that's colored like that, it'd be another reason to be fun to trip. Seriously. Oh yeah, yeah. Watch the, the buildings melt. That'd be neat. Um, <laughs> until I need help. Help. I need help. I'm 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 in the building. I'm in the building. I'm I am the building. The building. <laughs> I am melting. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, in the number one spot, <laughs> we have Three from Hell, the soundtrack and the movie. Uh, number two, Wheeler Walker Jr.'s Sex, Drugs, and Country Music. Number three is Alex's Spot. Number four is Kaleo A slash B. Number six is King Missile. Happy Hour is the album. Number seven. It is my spot. Yeah, I'm moving fast. Sorry. <laughs> Are you fucking with me? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> like a grandma trying to get to church on Sunday. All right. Number, yeah. number eight, um, our newest addition to the list, Mastodon, the album, Hushed and Grim. Number, number nine, Green Druid, At the Mall of Ruin is the album. Number 10, St. Vitus. <laughs> Never going to get confidence on that one. The album there, born too late. You you every every week you uh fuck it up. You say it right, but you act like you're not gonna say it right. Because I think it's Vitus, but it's Vitus. Yeah, it's Vitus. Say Vitus. 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 I'll write it on the chalkboard. All right, let's see what we get. All right, kids. Let's see what this the beautiful wheel gives us, eh? <laughs> Give us rainbows and kitty cats and some music. Four. four. Oh, got? cool. Did I miss number four? I don't think so. Why? All right. Well, it's Pussifer. V is for vagina. Oh. Don't think okay. I said that out loud. <laughs> maybe. Maybe I, I, when I was fucking with you, it really fucks with you. <laughs> uh, it's so easy. <laughs> Fuck. I'm like one of those voodoo dolls. You poke me. I'm just, ow! Um, all right. So V is for vagina. Uh, Pussifer, Pussifer, Pussifer. Yes, this is one of May Maynard's bands, the lead singer of Tool. Got a few side projects. This is his direct, like, this is what I want to do band. Um, right. He called it a comic band or a joke band when they started. But give it a listen. Have a sense of humor, but it fucking rocks. So enjoy, and we'll talk about that next week. Thanks for watching. Alex is going to tell you how to worship us real quick. Um, on your knees. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Instagram, uh, tipfoo69. You can leave a comment on any of the videos. You could go into, uh, you could direct message us for a suggestion for a um, artist, band, and an album. Do the same thing on YouTube on the most recent episode in the comment section. And other than that, thank you for watching and listening. We'll talk to you all soon. Hell yeah. Thank you very much for the support. See you next week. Be safe. Have a good time. Bye.